Well, I've been in the gym like since I was really little, probably about three. Um, like I'd done when I was in not here. I didn't start at South Physics. Um, like a swim and gym class. It's just like a little bit of fun. To my mum wanted me to waste some energy because I was quite a hyperactive child. Um, well, we started off at um, preschool gym and swim over at a local club um, on Canby Island. Um, and the guy there said to me that I had a gymnast in the making and um, we sort of said, what, at three years old, don't think so. Told us, recommended that we came to South Essex Gymnastics Club. Um, and that's how Bryn got into gym, really. So I brought him to South Essex and he's really never looked back. See you later, mate. Have a good time. See ya. Bye. Well, it's funny, it's a funny story, that. So I saw, I came into the gym one day and Bryn must have been about three years old. Um, and I saw this little boy climb to the top of our pile of chairs that are stacked in the reception area, get one on his shoulder for himself, the other on his shoulder for his mum, climb back down, stick it out in the reception area, sit down, cross his arms and, and wait for his training session. And I thought, you know, that kid's got something. And then when I saw him in the gym as well, it, it, was, it was clear. So around about three or four years old, Bryn's a, a real competitive animal. Yeah, he works really hard in the gym, he trains a lot of hours, he's very focused. Uh, but his real forte is when he goes into competition, he's able to switch it on, he focuses on what he's got to do, and there's nothing that gets in his way. I suppose because we've just, as he's grown up, he's just always been in the gym, so I don't really know any different. So it's just a case of we just run around backwards and forwards. The One of the reasons, obviously, why I work within the South Essex Gym Club is because Brim was always here so much. South Essex Gym Club, Paula speaking, how can I help you? Well, I think, you know, his, his uh, natural, you know, physique that he's been born with is, is obviously, you know, um, he's been blessed with that. But I think it's his mental attitude towards com competing uh, that gives him the cutting edge over other athletes. He's very, very able to compete under pressure and is, you know, amazing in, in, in the world of, you know, competitive um, sport. Um, well, when I was, like, younger, I, I was quite... Uh, Higher level, like under 12, under 14 gymnast. Um, but then, like, for, I had like a down period where it just all went a bit wrong. And um, so I've just been working really hard, and it's like every, everyone's been supporting me, like emotionally and everything. And um, like, because everyone's been behind me, it's given me quite a lot of motivation to pick myself back up again. And it's like paid off as for E off as well. So. Um, well, my my dad, um, he like he was in hospital for about two years, like on and off. Um, he had cancer, and um, yeah, he passed away. But um, so it was obviously a really hard time for me and my family. And um, I, I, to make up for it, I used to like eat eat a lot, <laughs> and um, it, I got quite heavy, and I found gymnastics like really hard. So that that like didn't help at all. How have we got through with his dad passing away? It's been hard. It's still raw. <sighs> you do get through. Emotionally, it's hard work. Um, I know that he was with Bryn, or he, he's with Bryn every step of the way. Bryn made a promise to his dad to hopefully go out and get the Olympic gold. And fingers crossed, you know, we go all the way. I, oh, it was really horrible, it was like upsetting. Like I just break down in the gym sometimes and all of my friends like Reese and Max and that, that will like come and help me and try and cheer me up. But um, I also miss quite a bit of gym because my, my dad was in London, which is like an hour away from like this gym, and um, I, I used to like go and see him a lot, and, and like we used to help him and that in the hospital. So it, it like I wasn't in the gym as much as I am now. So 
Well, it's very difficult, obviously. Um, I mean, without the support from, from obviously his mum and my colleague Matt Jackson, who's, who's um, you know still works with me now. I don't think I'd have been able to cope because uh, Brim was was very upset, very emotional, and it was hard because you know we still had expectations of him to to, to do well at the sport. Um, you know, and as a team, we managed that situation, um, and you know. We had lots of people involved, so you know I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done for, for him to, to help him through the situation. Um, equally, massively, you know, um, impressed with how he has dealt with it himself uh, because he did go through some very hard times. That was really hard. I tried to carry on as normal as possible, backwards and forwards to the gym. Um, he went through some bad times. He was not in a very good place. Scott, his coach, he went, he dropped a group. He went down to Matt. We backed off for six months. Um, and basically, within three months, he wanted to be back with Scott. And I think he realised that being in the gym was probably the best thing that we ever did. It was difficult. Um, he, he, he came in and sometimes he would just sit and burst into tears. Um, he'd, he'd find it very hard to motivate himself. Uh, he put on a lot of weight as well through that period because I think he was, was eating to comfort himself. Um, and, it, and it was quite, quite frustrating. Whilst I had an, an understanding of what, what happened, it was quite um, frustrating at times because I thought that this could be his sort of um, escape from, from the situation. Um, well, like it wasn't as good because like obviously I was heavy and I couldn't do a lot so it was really frustrating because I found everything a lot harder but um, I, th I think it was quite good because it got my like mind off of things it, it distracted me a bit so it was pretty good. Even though in training he was struggling and even though he'd put on a lot of weight and even though he couldn't do the stuff that he could before if you still put him in a competition environment, he would still go and <laughs> win everything. You know, it was it was phenomenal. We knew that we had to look after him in the world of gymnastics, but we also had to look after him as a, a young individual that was going through a tough time. So, you know, it was a, it was a massive thing for us to, to make sure that he was safe and come out the other end of this. Um, well, but both of them, like when I was little, and my mum's still now, like they, they've, they've always been, but like behind me, like supporting me. That they, they didn't like mind what I do, they just wanted me to do well and enjoy what I do. So um, like they came to like nearly every competition when I was little and um, my mum still tries to come to all of them now, but they, so they were quite important. Um, well, my, my father was quite sporty as well, like he didn't do gymnastics, like um, yeah I, I, did, I did idolise my dad, like just like he was, he was like a good guy, everyone liked him, he had a lot of friends and just wanted to be like him, so. What has changed, obviously, is the fact is that it's only myself around. Um, it's hard work, because his dad was at every competition, and we followed him all around like the little international competitions that he competed for the club, which is South Essex Gym Club, and for um, British Gymnastics, for obviously Great Britain. And we used to be at every comp. So for him, he's lost uh, one of his biggest supporters, which is his dad. Um, well, I made a promise to him when, just before like he went, and um, I just got to try and my best to succeed and um, try and get to the Olympics. So. Um, I think it was tough and every time he'd done it he'd promised his dad that he was going to, to do the best he could um, you know, and, and make him proud. So I think every time he does a competition I think he has that on his mind as, as well as his own expectation and, and you know, his own pressures. I think he'll always remember what he said to his, his father. Um, so I think so, you know, mentally it's, it's quite tough for him at times because of the added pressure. Um, I've just learned to live with it now, like, there's nothing you can do about it, like, 
as Bart said in one of the other episodes, like you only live once and um, you just got to get on with it. You can't change anything, so. Um, but him, I think, it is that little saying, what doesn't kill you does make you stronger. And I think that's how he's come out the other side. Um, I was working towards EOF really hard because um, it was a qualification for the J Junior Japan Cup, which is at the end of September. It was like very unexpected to, well, for me to do that because both both of my two teammates are really good, and um, it just comes down to what happens on the day. And I done really well. So obviously, it's really nervous. I get really nervous because I know that he can do it within the gym in training sessions, and then you just hope that they can pull it off at a competition. Um, it makes me proud and he's just a good kid. Uh, I knew that he could. I, I knew that he had the talent and the potential. I didn't expect him to win this time um, because you know some of the other British team members actually are phenomenal and I know that a lot of the other guys from Russia, from Holland, from other places are, are, are quite high standard. So I knew it'd be difficult. Um, I expect him to maybe come in the top four, top five, uh, but to go and win just sort of proves my point of how he's able to just switch on and, and focus and if he wants something there's, there's no stopping him. I, I was, it was really good, it was a great atmosphere because like, it was a multi-sporting event and um, like lots of different countries and like I made loads of friends and it was just even greater that uh, we won team gold and um, I went on to win the individual gold and silver and a couple of the apparatus. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't go to every competition. I used to, um, but obviously, commitment-wise now, um, financial-wise, it's not. It doesn't happen. Um, obviously, his most recent competition, which was the Youth Olympics out in the Netherlands, um, I did go, and that was the Monday to Friday in Utrecht, and that was fantastic because it was a really big competition. I, I think I think so like a big step forwards because um it's like there's a lot of pressure on us to like win the team and um it's just it's really great knowing that I can beat both of my teammates now. But like better than that we're both like we're all a really good strong team and if we go clean then we can dominate stuff so I like being there. He knows I'm there because I I've got the biggest voice going, really, and shouting and hollering for him. But I don't think he hears anything when he's down competing. Um, but yeah, just it's just he just makes me proud because he's done so well. He's done a proper proper build up, proper preparation. I think the actual competition was a multi-sport event, so it gave him a lot of experience in dealing with outside pressures, media. Um, having to deal with people, um, sort of putting extra pressure on him. So yeah, absolutely. And here we are. He's proved quite a lot of people wrong because obviously he's come through the bad times and out the other side. And here we are today with uh, an Olympic um, Junior Youth Olympic medal. So really, really pleased. Basically, when his dad was, was close to death, um, he, he, he said to him that I will go and I will try to win a medal for you at the Olympic Games, and Olympic Games, um, and that's what he wants to try to, to stick to. Well, I wasn't in the room at the time at the hospital, but I believe that the pair of them had a chat, obviously, and he did promise his dad that he would do his utmost to make that Olympic medal. And I do believe in my heart that he will go to the Olympics. 
and hopefully time will tell and we will wait and see and hopefully maybe a medal might come along. I mean he's got good backing behind him, Scott's fantastic, um, the club's fantastic, um, obviously his teammates, all of them, Max Whitlock, Reese, Beckford, Anthony Wise and his self work as a good team and obviously Max a good role model so we know it can be done. Uh, yeah, like that is my ultimate goal. Like I, everything, like I want to go to the like European worlds and hopefully the Olympics. Like, but that uh, hopefully maybe 2016. But um, it's just I'm gonna keep going and hopefully I'll get there at least once. So, um, and it's great training with Max because he's already done it. So, like it's it's good watching him train because he's doing like everything like right. So I know what to do and if I can keep up with Max then. Hopefully I can go to the Olympics with him next time, maybe two from the same club. So That's great, it's fantastic. It means that he's very focused and he's got, you know, a, a real desire and ambition to do that. So actually it helps our programme and our sort of uh, guidance anyway because it means that he's even more motivated than, than a lot of others. Um, but it also adds a little bit of pressure on as well because I massively want him to, to, to you know, fulfil his promise, if you like. How am I going to support him? Just carry on doing what I'm doing now. Work full time at South Essex Gym Club. I get him to every competition that he needs to be to. Um, obviously up to Lillishaw for training and obviously into the gym every day. But he does the rest of it himself. So it's just fingers crossed and hopefully we might see him at 216 or 220. Fingers crossed. Next year I've still got a couple of more junior comps, uh, like the Junior Europeans again and then the like, proper Youth Olympics and that's in uh, China, so hopefully I shall be going to that one. And after that it's just I've got to make, like, like I've got to make a scene on like the senior team. Well ever since I was like little, when, when I was with my dad, like I saw the Olympics on TV and I just like, I said like that's where I want to be, I want to do that. So it, it's like a... Like every, everyone praises you, it's like a really big thing, like, to, like, do you imagine like standing on the podium at the Olympics with like all your country cheering for you, like, it's, it's just, it would be an amazing feeling to get that, so. Tough times don't last, tough people do.